What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Busy Dad here, you there, checking out the latest deck build video. I always start these out the same way, so why change tradition? Let's say hello to my newest subscribers coming in at the bottom right here. Big hello and a big thank you to everyone on board. Always room on board. Team Busy. But I noticed that I had not put up a deck profile in almost a month, so that is unacceptable. So we're getting one up today, and just a disclosure, I guess I could say, uh, this deck does not contain any of the Legacy Lost cards. I'm still going through my new set, still finding out uh, which cards are cool, and uh, putting decks together. So those new decks will be coming soon, trust me. But today's deck is geared more towards casual players or beginners especially ones who bought the Feet Sing starter deck that came out in the first Lapis Cluster set. And I had a couple of people ask me on some comments, hey, you know, you got any fun Feet Sing ideas? Sure I do. Uh, the Feet Sing starter deck actually is pretty good. And I took the cards that I liked from in there and brought in some support for, uh, from other sets to make a really fun deck. A really simple, straightforward deck. If you're new to the game, if you're just getting into it, you're curious, you have the deck, you're casual. Um, this is a really fun deck that's uh, easy to work, easy to play, and can win games. I've, I've won some games against competitive decks with it. So don't underestimate it. Check it out and let me know what you think. So this is the profile for the deck I call Top Shelf Elf, and it's with our ruler, Feet Sing, Six Sage of Wind. Now, this is the Feet Sing ruler from the starter deck. So um, you get this, you get the ruler, you get the stones, and you get a, a, a pre-built deck. So we took the cards from in there, like I said, took some cards from that deck, and we surrounded it with other green support. So here is Feet Sing, the ruler, a Judgment of Five. She's an elf or Six Sage ruler. So Judgment of Five, that's pretty steep. Two green and three of other. And you see she has the Energize. So if you go second, you get the token or the coin to produce one green will at any time. Feet Sing has really cool ability that we uh, exploit in this deck. Whenever you play your second card each turn, put a 100-100 Wind Elf Resonator token into your field. So if we can just move her to the side for a second. Every time you play your second card, on each turn, could be your turn or your opponent's turn, you get to put a 100-100 Wind Elf Resonator token into your field. Uh, these are the only Legacy Lost cards you're gonna see in this video for now. They actually printed a couple of token cards, which are cool. These are the only two I have. Um, I definitely wanna get a few more of these. So every time you play your second card, you get to put this 100-100 Resonator into your field. It's an Elf, it's a Wind Resonator, 100-100, um, seems puny, but we definitely will take advantage of this um, in part of our win condition to flood the field and uh, make them strong. You'll see that as we go along. We'll get back into it. But back to uh, Feet Sing, that's going to be continuous. So throughout the game, every time you play two cards, your second card, you're going to get uh, that token onto the field. So let's pay the judgment cost. It is two green and three of other. And she flips over to Feet Sing. Uh, wow, I gotta read this. Master Magus of Holy Wind. Okay, so she's still an elf, six sage on the J ruler side, 800 attack and defense. Other elves you control gain plus four, plus four. So, not so funny anymore. These 100, 100 elves are now 500, 500 when she flips over. Um, now, whenever you play your second card each turn, put two. 100, 100 Wind Elf Resonator tokens into your field. So when you have her flipped over, again, every time you play your second card, you get to put two of the Elf tokens into your field. And because she's flipped over, they're 500, 500. So really, really strong when she flips over, all the Elves get pumped up. And now every time you play two cards, you get two of those tokens into your field. So as you're gonna see with these cards, the main focus of this deck is to play two cards every time it's your turn and get these tokens onto the field and then pump them up. And we have ways to do that, of course, with our support cards that we'll get into. But a real quick look at our stone base. Uh, this is a mono green deck. So all we do 
our, we run 10 wind magic stones and these are the stones straight from the starter deck box themselves so uh, no need to change that we just run 10 of them and i'm not going to put all 10 i'm sure you get it so let's go into our resonators and our first one is four copies of the sacred elf from the starter deck it's a one drop elf resonator 200 attack 300 defense with the ability to rest and produce one green will. So that is really cool. It's a quick way to ramp. We get some extra will this way. The elf comes on the field and we have a way to produce an extra green right off the bat. Um, another theme you're gonna see through this deck is we just play 10 cards, four copies of each. Like I said, real simple, real straightforward, easy to play. So a good way to get a resonator and uh, will, uh, will producing on the field. We have four copies of Elf of the Gusty Hill, another one-drop Elf Resonator, 400 attack and defense with no other ability. So this is a straight-up 400-400 Resonator for one, and it's an Elf. So again, you're going to see that theme. We're going to have a lot of Elves in, these deck, in this deck, excuse me, and that's going to play into our advantage later on. Four copies of Kriya, Musician of Wind. This is a three-drop Elf Resonator, 500 attack, 700 defense. When this card enters your field, search your deck for an Elf Resonator with total cost of one. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. However, if you played two or more cards this turn, you may put that Resonator into your field instead. So we're going to use this card to take advantage of a couple of things here. Uh, if Kriya is the second card that we played, we get to search our deck for a one-drop Elf Resonator. Uh, so we'll just take this one. And because it's the second card, we get to put it right into our field. And because it's also the second card, we get a 100-100 Elf Token Resonator to go into the field as well. So uh, playing Kriya as the second card is actually really strong because in essence it's a three resonator swing we do get to put her onto the field we get to put the one drop onto the field and then we get the token onto the field as well so again they might look small but they start building up really fast and then um again our goal is just to flood this board into our our opponent and beat them into submission uh, which is what ultimately we want to do also i do there is another ability on kriya before i forget if you rest a recovered elf resonator you control, target elf J resonator gains plus one plus one until the end of turn. And it could be something good for late game if you manage to build up a lot of the token resonators on the field. Uh, you can rest them, preferably after draw and before recovery, rest them and then pump one of your other elves up by a bunch for that turn. <clears throat> Excuse me, that works too. Our big hitter in the deck is from the starter deck. It's four copies of Vampire Hunter Christie. A four drop elf resonator, 1000 attack and defense. A lot of text on this card. When this card enters your field, if you play two or more cards this turn, there's the theme, this card and target J resonator your opponent controls deals damage equal to their attack to each other. So if Christie is the second card, again, that's our theme. We want to play two cards each turn. So we play a card and then we play Christie as our second card. She gets to come in, and because she's the second card, she gets to deal her attack of 1,000 to a J Resonator our opponent controls, and then that J Resonator deals this, their damage to Christy. So obviously, you're going to want to pick somebody who is weaker uh, than Christy to slam into for 1,000. So that's cool. If it's the second card, you do that, and it's the second card, so boom, you get another Elf Token Resonator for the field. Um, Christy is strong for that, but she's also just as strong for her other ability and a good way to win the game as well. For one green, this card gains plus two, plus two until end of turn. You can only play this ability if your ruler or J ruler is feet sing. So really slick. Um, Christy's on the field. You can swing to attack. Uh, if your opponent lets the damage through and you have open stones, you can then pay each green. And for each green, she gets another plus two, plus two. So good way to sneak in an extra 200, 400 damage just on that ability alone. Really smart play. And that is it for our resonator. So let's go into spells and abilities. And first one off the bat is a really good addition. The secluded elven village, Aminsul. I might have uh, said that wrong. I know the pronounced police are out there. And you should know I'm a repeat offender. So this is an addition for one drop. It goes right into the field. 
Elf J Resonators you control gain plus 200 defense. That is pretty good because we do have a lot of weak Resonators uh, with the Elves. So pumping up their defense is great. J Resonators your opponent controls with flying cannot attack your Resonators. And that's pretty good too. I mean, sure, they'll cut, they could still come after you and that's fine. But if you have any rested Resonators, anybody that your opponent has with flying cannot attack them directly. So nice little perk there. But J Resonators you control can block J Resonators with flying. So wow, now every single Resonator you have, every single one of our elves, even the little, little 100 100s, they can now block flyers. And that is a great way to prevent big damage from Gwybers and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Flame Dragons. Um, anybody big who could fly, <clears throat> excuse me, every one of our Resonators can now just come up and block them, which is really good. Four copies of Home of the Sages. This is a, another really slick addition. Uh, two drop, one green and one of other to play. Uh, if you rest it, you could produce any color will, but you only play this ability if you played a card this turn. This card looks for itself. So this is great. You play it. And because you played a card, now you can rest it to produce a color. So a really slick move would be to play this. And then since you played a card this turn, instantly you rest it, produce a color, and then play a one drop elf. And because we play two cards, now we get an Elf Wind Resonator token onto the field. So again, there are definitely a bunch of ways to uh, manipulate these cards. So we're always getting the ability to play two and getting that token. Speaking of manipulating, here's four copies of Rewriting Laws. It's a two-drop spell chant. You can only do this on your turn. But Magic Stones you control gain the ability to produce any color until end of turn. Great. But... Recover up to two Magic Stones you control and draw a card. So that this card is amazing because you essentially play it for free. It costs two. You can make any color now with your stones, and then you can recover two stones. You just recover the two stones you paid to cast a spell, basically. And then you get to draw a card. And this sets you up to uh, play a second card this turn. Then you play that second card, and boom, Elf Resonator token into the field. So again, all these cards work really well together in order to get that token out there. Sneaky, sneaky. I always like to put sneaky cards in here. And here's another example of getting a Vingolf 2 card to work. Here's four copies of Power of Unity. And it is a two drop, one green, one other. Spell chain instant. You can do this at any time. Target Resonator gains plus six, plus six until end of turn. However, if you control four or more Resonators, it also gains, whenever this card deals damage to a Resonator, this card deals that much damage to your opponent until end of turn. Really sneaky play. So let's explain it. Let's say we have Christy on the board, 1,000 attack and defense, and we attack our opponent for 1,000. Our opponent declares a block. Let's say they have somebody who's uh, 600 that they just want to block off. Or maybe somebody that's 1,200 that could potentially block and kill our Christie. We pay our two stones, and we play Power of Unity on Christie. So now Christie becomes 1,600, 1,600. And if we control four or more Resonators, which you'll cast the spell if you control four or more Resonators, she now deals the 1,600 damage to the Resonator, and then our opponent takes that same 1,600 damage too. That is really strong. And if Power of Unity is the second card we played that turn, well, we get another token to put onto the field. So it really is a good play. Uh, this is also a really good play with her green ability, too. If we could put the Power of Unity on Christy, she's 16-16. And then we can then use any other open green stones to pump her up plus two, plus two each stone. Now we could be looking at hitting our opponent for 2,000, 2,200, 2,400. It could be the game. Uh, at that point. So this is a really sneaky card. Power of Unity is a really good card. It, it fits well in this deck with this concept. And this is probably a card your opponent will not see coming uh, the first time around. And then once they know you have it, uh, they might think twice about blocking or attacking you. That's actually really strong. Four copies of Keen Sense. This is a two drop instant. You could do it at any time. One green, one of other to play. And you choose one. You could cancel a target normal spell, which is good, 
or you could destroy a target card in a chant standby area. So if you're going up against somebody who you know runs Executioner or Prison in Lunar Lake, any of those sneaky cards in the standby area, Keen tends to come out and pop it. But at the same time, it's good to have that cancel ability. Uh, if you're playing anybody who runs some big spells, you can grab Keen Sense and then cancel it when they try to play it. That's uh, a pretty good card, especially at instant speed. Our final card is uh, another potential winner. It's Sprint of the Beast Lady. Four copies of it. So it's a three drop, two green and one other. It's just a regular chant. You can only do it on your turn, but it's a big one. J Resonators you control gain plus six, plus six until end of turn. Um, that's it, but it is pretty straightforward. Everybody gets bumped plus six, plus six for the turn. Um, if you have those elves on the field with the tokens and um, you got four or five, maybe even six out there, and they all jump up plus six, plus six. That is big, big trouble for your opponent, uh, especially if they only have a few blockers. It means that a lot of damage is going to get through to your opponent. So again, we don't have a lot of expensive cards in here. We focus on lower cost to get that second card into play. When it comes to the sideboard, this is usually a situational thing. Uh, you can pick and choose which cards switch in and out. I just have a couple of suggestions, not really an official sideboard for it, but um, this is from the starter deck. It's four copies of Tama, Familiar of Holy Wind. It's a one drop, 200 attack and defense. It's a familiar or cat resonator. And the reason why it's not in the main deck is because it's not an elf. I wanted to make the main deck all elves so they can feed off each other, combo off each other. Uh, when this card enters your field, draw a card. That is always great. And you can banish it and deal 200 damage to a target resonator. So if you find that you uh, want to add a little more draw power to your deck, you can add Tama. Um, this is the last drop. It's another instant. Two drops, one green, one other. You can do this at any time, and you get to choose one. Either gain 1,000 life, uh, gaining life is always great, or you can put a target resonator with total cost two or less from your graveyard into your field instead. So um, if you want to grab an elf out of the graveyard, onto the field at the end of your opponent's turn to maybe set up a, a big swing on your turn. You could do that too. It's a pretty good card. Uh, if you're low on life, there's nothing wrong with gaining a thousand life. So just something to keep in mind. Four copies of Heavenly Gust, a two drop quick cast chant. You could do it at any time. And you choose one, Destroy Target Edition or Regalia, which is really nice. But it does have that Torrent ability. If it's the second card you play, you get to destroy all additions and regalia your opponent controls. So this is good for a feet sing deck um, or a heavy regalia deck, heavy addition deck. You make Heavenly Gust the second card you play, and you get to wipe everything out. And because it's the second card you played, you get a 100-100 health uh, token on the field. Also, uh, finally, a fun card. Uh, something, again, if you like to be goofy, if you like to... Uh, sneak in some cards no one would expect coming, then take a look at this. There's four copies of Melt to Nothing. Now, it's three drops, quick cast. So you can do this at any time, but notice I know the color is blue. It's two blue and one of other to play. But don't forget, you do have ways of pulling this off. Uh, if you have Home of the Sages out there, if you happen to get two and you played a card this turn, you can rest to produce the blue. So that's one way to pull this card off, excuse me. The other one is rewriting laws, because if you have rewriting laws, all your magic stones can now make any color, and then you can come back and play Melt to Nothing. And if you do that way, and Melt to Nothing is your second card, uh, guess what? Token, right. You know, we know the theme by now. But Melt to Nothing is a really sneaky and really fun card. J Resonators you control gain the ability to rest and return target resonator your opponent controls to its owner's hand until the end of the turn. So if you're in a situation where you outnumber your opponent with resonators on the board and with these tokens, it's real easy to do, you could play melt to nothing and then take your smaller resonators and rest them, send your opponent's resonators back to their hand and then boom, swing in for the big attack. Um, it is a quick cast, so you could do it on your opponent's turn too. It's a little harder to do in this deck um, if you don't have the home of the sages, but Again, just a fun card. I'm always looking for ways to put uh, fun and goofy cards in. So, you know, just something to keep in mind if you want to uh, surprise your opponent for a turn or two. At least one time. It's fun. So, guys, that is it. The profile for Top Shelf Elf. There is Feetsing, our ruler here. Uh, if you play the deck, 
you'll see how the resonators can pile up really quickly, get strong really quickly, and then uh, just come in for the kill. Especially with the Elf Village, they could block flyers. That really is a downer for your opponent because now even their biggest flyer can get picked off by a 100-100 Elf. Uh, Power of Unity just makes them stronger and the damage gets through to your opponent. Christy can uh, pump herself up to uh, Sprint of the Beast Lady, pumps everybody up. Feet Sing flipped over, pumps everybody up. There's a, a bunch of ways to get everybody really strong. So let me know what you think with a comment below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We got more videos and more deck profiles coming soon with some legacy lost cards in there. I'm uh, working on them as we speak. But that's it for today. And as always, thanks for a few minutes, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.